الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد we continue reading in Kitab al Zakah the book of of al Zakah and uh, we have seen in our previous class. The definition of a zakah, luwatan mustilaha, the definition linguistically, and likewise the definition legislatively, and we have seen the relationship between the two. And because this chapter here and this affair, the affair of zakah, as we all know, is from the pillars of Al Islam. Rather, it's the greatest pillar after the pillar of the Shahadatain and the pillar of as Salah, the most important and greatest pillar after the Shahadatain and, and after the Salah is the, the pillar of as Zakah. So, since this is the issue in the affair, then we will take the most important issues related to this, to this chapter, the fundamentals and uh, the most important issues related to this chapter, especially those uh, issues that we face in uh, these times and these days, specifically before we begin reading the narrations that the author he had mentioned. So we will discuss the most important fundamentals and the foundations uh, with regards to this, this chapter from the conditions and from uh, the wealth, the amount that uh, it, must, it must reach from the nisab and the likes like this and who is allowed to receive, so on and so forth. So this will be our, our studies with regards to this chapter for the next few classes before we begin reading the specific narrations that the author here had mentioned. Rahimahullah ta'ala, in order to have uh, a solid understanding and a good foundation with regards to the issue of his zakah, knowing its fundamentals, being able to picture the issues properly, and to understand the, the obligation of this affair, the obligation of, uh, of this affair. So in our previous class, we have taken a zakat luwatan. Who can remind us of the definition of zakat linguistically? The definition of zakat linguistically. Anama'u wa tathheer. Anama'u wa tathheer. Ahsant. wa ziyada wa Yani that a zakat linguistically, it means to grow and to increase. It means to grow and to increase, and also it means to purify. So therefore, as a cat linguistically, it has two meanings. One of them is to grow and to increase and to flourish. And from this aspect, the people of Nara, as I mentioned the example, Zaka Zara, meaning a nama, wazad, meaning the crops they grew and they increased, meaning they flourished. But you use this verb like this, Zaka Yizku, as Zara, meaning the crops. So this is what is uh, intended here from that linguistic aspect. But also another meaning is uh, to be purified, to be, pur to be purified. And from that aspect, zakatu and nafs, or taskiyatu and nafs. And many times uh, the verb will be used on another form, uh, on another scale, on the scale of fa'ala. And they will say zakka, qad aflaha man zakkaha, qad aflaha man zakkaha, on the scale of fa'ala to indicate the, that there's purification uh, that is happening, that's being done to the soul. And this is another aspect likewise of this uh, verb, zakat. And both meanings are included in the word zakat. What are the zakati fa'ilun? Those people who are doing a zakat. Yani they are purifying their souls and likewise they are performing the obligatory zakat on their wealth. And this meaning is understood here. This meaning is understood here. So the word is zakat, it has both meanings. It has both meanings. The person, he purifies his soul, he makes zakat of his soul, and likewise, he makes zakat on his wealth, on his wealth. But the pillar of Al-Islam, the, the zakat that is the pillar of Al-Islam, this is zakatu al-mal, zakatu al-mal, the zakat of the wealth. So this is the linguistic meaning. It has two meanings. What are they again? To grow, to grow and, to purify. and to purify. To grow and to purify. Both of these meanings are found in the in the legislative meaning. Both of these meanings are found in 
and the, the, the law and, legis- and the legislation of zakat, the obligatory charity. How is that? Both of these meanings here, growing and purifying, they're found in the legislative meaning of zakat, the obligatory charity. The person who performs the zakat on his wealth, that's obligatory, then, then both of these meanings are found there. Yani his, the, the, the issue of growing and flourishing and increasing, and likewise the issue of purification is found there. Uh huh. His wealth, his wealth will grow and purify. So if he has a thousand dollars and he had to give twenty five dollars in zakat, then he will have his his uh, his wealth grows. <laughs> his wealth grows. Is that what you're saying? And he, or you take twenty five from it. So now it becomes how much? Nine seventy five. So did his did his money grow? Uh-huh. This is how it come in Sahih and in Muslim. This is the wording of a Tilmidi. And the meaning is the same. That the sadaqa, the charity, that it doesn't cause the it doesn't decrease the wealth. But we see here the somebody who had a thousand dollars to pay zakat on, how much would he pay? Twenty-five dollars. He'll pay twenty-five dollars. So his money now became nine hundred and seventy-five. Did it grow or did it increase? <laughs> what is apparent is that it decreased. But the point here is that it will be a means for it to grow. It will be a means for it to flourish. It will be a means for it to have blessing. For it to have blessing. So that so the one who gives the 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 obligatory charity, then that will be a means for his money to flourish and to grow. And it means for that wealth to have blessing in it and to have benefit for that person, to have benefit for that person. Some people, the wealthy, they're rich. Maybe they have lots of money. Some of the affluent, any of the Muslim and non-Muslim, and they don't pay the zakat on that. And their money is, uh, is a calamity for them and a trial for them. And it's not a blessing for them. And they spend and they spend and they spend, but there's no blessing in their wealth. There's no barakah in their wealth. And the lines like this, but somebody else, maybe he has lesser than that, and he pays the zakat on that, and his wealth takes him yani, a long way. It's very beneficial for him, and it's a blessing for him. And uh, there's good in that wealth for him. So therefore, the, the fact that it's, uh, it, it grows, meaning it's a means for the, the wealth to, to flourish and to be good and to have blessing. To flourish and to be good and to have blessing. And many times the people who have the obligation of zakat on their wealth and they perform that, they'll find that their wealth actually increases. And by the next year, they have double that or more. They have double that or more. And in the life like this, their wealth will have blessing in it and it will actually grow. And it will actually grow, alhamdulillah. And likewise, those who give charity, likewise, the non-obligatory charity. The non-obligatory charity, many times, this, the, those people who do that, they give this money, they find that they'll give $100 in return, they'll have 700. Or in return, they'll have double that or triple that or multiply it. Yani as Allah wills and decrees, the people who give up their wealth for the sake of Allah, many times Allah Azza wa Jalla, He multiplies that for them. He multiplies that for them. So from this aspect, yani this is what is intended. It grows. It's a means for the wealth to grow and to flourish. And also, it's a means of purification. So the law of a zakat, or the legislation of a zakat, is a, is a means of purif- purifying. It's a means of purification. How is that? We spoke about three aspects in our previous class. Three aspects of purification that come from the issue of zakat. It purifies, it purifies the wealth. It purifies the wealth. The Prophet وسلم, he said, whoever performs the zakat on his wealth, then the evil of that will go away. And he will do away with the evil that is in the wealth. So it's a means to purify the wealth. If there's any evil, if there, if there's any evil in the wealth, or any sharr in the wealth, or anything that is indecent or foul or not correct with regards to the wealth, by performing the zakat, all of this goes away and is purified. All of this goes away and is purified. This is one aspect. And also it purifies the one who performs the zakat, it purifies his soul from greed and from stinginess. It purifies his soul from greed and from stinginess. So the one who gives the zakat, yani he is purifying his wealth. It's a means to purify his wealth. And also in the purification of the wealth, this is also from the aspect of how it will be able to grow. Because whenever, whenever it's pure from filth and pure from being mixed with haram and that which is uh, not good, then now it has nothing to do except for to grow and to flourish. And whenever there's the, the evil is removed from that, 
And whenever the filth is moved from that, at this time it will be able to grow and to flourish. So this is the aspect. Also the one who gives the zakat, by giving up that portion of wealth, and by giving up that, uh, that money that he loves and desires, this is purifying his soul from stinginess and from greed. That means to purify his soul from stinginess and from greed. This is two aspects. There was one more aspect. Uh -huh. uh, but now we're talking about how, how the, the relationship of purification, how the purification occurs with the zakat. In our previous class, we mentioned three aspects. One of them, it purifies the wealth. The second one, it purifies the soul of the one giving zakat. Huh? The one taking. Uh huh. The, who who is that? Uh, the uh, the ones who receive the zakat. The poor and the needy. The poor, uh, the poor and the needy. How does it purify them? From it purifies their hearts, likewise, from jealousy and having hard feelings towards the wealthy and towards the rich. So whenever the person he has uh, he performs his zakat, and he gives it to the poor and to the needy. Many times, uh, the poor and the needy they'll look at the wealthy. They'll look at the wealthy and if they're not careful, then jealousy will enter their hearts and they'll be jealous uh, of them and they'll have enmity in their heart towards them and they'll have hard feelings in their heart towards, towards them and the likes like this. This is all from the whispers of shaitan. This is all from the trials of shaitan. But by giving the, the, the charity to them, by the wealthy having concern with them and care for them and giving them the charity that's obligatory and taking care of this obligation, this also purifies their heart from that. They will see that their brothers are fulfilling the obligations of zakat, that their brothers did not forget about them or neglect them, and the likes like this. Although the Allah had, had given them wealth and, and the likes like this, they did not neglect, neglect them. And they took care of them and they gave them their rights. They gave them their rights. So likewise, this is a means to purify uh, the, the, the hearts uh, of the, the poor and the needy as well from jealousy and from having envy and from having bad uh, feelings towards the wealthy. Towards the wealthy. So therefore, zakat is a purification. From this aspect, likewise, a means of, of purification. A means of purification. Who can remind us of the legislative uh, definition? Uh huh. Uh huh. MashaAllah. Akhthu marin maksusa, li ta'ifatin maksusa, fi waktin maksus. MashaAllah. This is one definition. But it's not complete. What's the definition we took yesterday? The, the people of knowledge, they have mentioned different definitions. Some of them are more yani, concise than others. Some of them are more concise and inclusive than others. At-ta'abudu huh? lillah. This one is important to mention. At-ta'abudu lillah. Any in the definition. As a reminder. At-ta'abudu lillah. Then what was after that? bi ikhraji qadarin muqaddar. Or juz'in muqaddar. Juz in Maqaddar Sharan. It is a Ta'abudu Lillahi Azza wa Jal bi Ikhraji Juz in Muqaddarin Sharan. Fiman in Maksus li Asnafin Maksusa bin Niyya. So Ta'abudu Lillah. That means it's an act of worship. It has to be done sincerely for the sake of Allah. What is this Ta'abud? What is this action of worship? Bi Ikhraji Juz in Muqaddarin Sharan Fiman in Maksus. By giving amount of wealth that is prescribed legislatively from a specific type of wealth. So we've seen that the amount is specific and it's, and it's decided and prescribed legislatively. And likewise that there is a specific type of wealth. Specific type of wealth. And that wealth is due to specific categories of people with intention. With intention. So the definition again, At-ta'abudu lillahi azza wa jal bi-ikhraji juz'in muqadarin shar'an fi marin maksus li asnafin maksusa biniya 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 So the, we, we discussed yesterday marin maksus and marin maksus that the zikad is only on certain types of wealth not on, not on all wealth and we mentioned five categories who can remind us of those categories? Five categories of wealth, the people of not as they mentioned that zakat, uh, it's an obligation to perform the zakat in this wealth. Any if the rest of the conditions are met. Are met. <laughs> they say, they call this in uh, this chapter so that we can also learn vocabulary. Words that are important, important terms in this chapter. And naqdan, and naqdan. What they mean by that, the, the two naqd. Yani al-dhahab wal-fiddah, gold and silver. Also here they say, وَمَا يُلْحَقُ بِهِمَا 
وَمَا يُلْحَقُ بِهِمَا That which is also included there. So the first category is gold and silver and that which is also included uh, with gold and silver which is? Money. Cash money. Cash money. The money. and nuqud يعني بالورق and the likes like this whether it's with ورق أو الحديد يعني whether it's paper money or likewise if it's the coins all of this is considered the same huh? this is all considered under the category of gold and silver the dollars that we have today the dollars and the cents and the reals and the likes like this all of this money here uh, uh, the currency is included in this and this point here الذهب والفضة you understand that? There's details, we, learn, we take the details later, just little by little we want to study this chapter good and, and we have a thorough understanding of this pillar of Al-Islam, of this pillar of Al-Islam, that's the first type, al <laughs> naqdan uh, you gather two of them, <laughs> uh, the, the, the second one we say, Al-Zuru' wa Thimar, Al-Zuru' wa Thimar, or we say, Ma tukhrijuhu al-Ard, Ma tukhrijuhu al-Ard, yani min al-Nabat, the, 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 that which the, the earth produces from grains and, and, and the likes, from grains and the likes. And this is also specific. It's not just anything that comes from the earth. For example, tomatoes, yeah, they come from the earth and the likes like this. Dates come from the earth. Not all of them are included. They're specific ones. We study those in its time. Right now, we just want to discuss where the wealth is. Where the wealth is. So that which is produced from the earth, meaning the crops. But they're specific ones likewise. Specific crops that are mentioned there. So we have the gold and the silver, we have the crops, and then Bahimatu al An'am. Bahimatu al An'am. What is intended here? The cattle. The Ibl, the Ibl, and the Bakr, and the Ghanam. The camels, and the cows, and the sheep, or the goats. Likewise, is included here. The camel, and the cow, and the sheep. Along with the sheep, the goats. The goats and the sheep, they're, they're the same. They're the same. So there's also Zakat here. Any, there's also zakat here, but there has to be nisab. This is another issue that will come later. This is a, any, a, along with the next conditions, along with fulfilling the rest of the conditions. Right now, we just want to know where is the zakat at? Where is, what, is the, what, what is the what is the what is the mal al What is the mal al maqsus? It's these affairs here. There's also other conditions that must be met. So not everybody that has a cow has to pay zakat on his cow. Not everybody that has gold has to pay zakat on his gold. You understand that not everybody who has a farm has to pray the cat on his crops. There's other conditions here. But we're just talking about these affairs here because this is where the zakat is. This is where the zakat is. This is where the zakat will, will, will be performed on if it meets the rest of the conditions. So we have the gold and silver and that which is with that from the cash. And then we have the, that which is produ the, produ the produce from the earth, which are the crops. And we have the cattle, which is the camels and the cows and the sheep and goats, the sheep and goats. And then after that we have urud at-tijara. Urud at-tijara, these are the items that are placed for sale. The items that are placed for sale. The items that a person he has, that he has intended by, by way of them to sell them. Whether they're in a market or a shop or whether they're in his home. Or whether they're in his home. If it's intended uh, and it's prepared, it's prepared and the person intends to sell it, then uh, this is something that zakat uh, will be performed on if the rest of the conditions are met. Somebody who has items, like for example, a store, he sells clothes, or he sells food, or he sells cars, or, 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 or he sells whatever he has that he has uh, to sell, then from the items to sell, then there's a cat in this affair here, if the rest of the conditions are met. And uh, the fifth one, al-ma'adin wa rikaz wa al-ma'adin wa rikaz And the ma'adin are the ores and the materials or the minerals that are found in the earth, like gold and silver. Like gold and silver, for example, that are found in the earth. That are found in the earth. Not the gold and silver that a person he buys and trades with or that he has in his jewelry and the likes like this that, that's found in the earth. Somebody will find in the ground gold or silver or other valuable mineral, uh, materials like this in the earth. There's a cat on this likewise. And also a rikaz. And a rikaz is the wealth or is the treasure that's found in the ground from the times of Jahiliya, from the wealth of the kufar, not of the Muslims. Out of the Muslims. And you'll know that, for example, if you find a treasure in the ground and it has crosses on it. You know, this is from the Kufar. Or if it has some signs of Jahiliyyah and the likes like this. But if it had an indication that it was from the Muslims, the ruling is different. The ruling is different. This will be in Bab Luqata. The, that which is something that was dropped and left. But in any case, so we have a naqdan wa ma yulhaqo bihima. Naam, you have the gold and silver and that which is along with that from the, from the cash. And we have the, the crops from the earth. And we have the cattle, which is the camels and the cows and the sheep. 
and we have the items that are prepared for sale in business and trade that you intend to sell them to get money and to make profit from. And then you have the issue of the, the, the material that is in the earth, like the gold and the silver, and the likes from these expensive metals. And uh, you have likewise the treasure that's found there as well, any from the times of Jahiliyyah. So this is the Mal al This is This is the Mal al and, uh, and, uh, and, and this is what is intended here. Uh, li asnaf and maqsusa li two two specific categories we spoke we mentioned yesterday that there was a number of categories that's allowed to receive zakat and who are they how many are they eight of them thamaniya eight of them there there eight of them thamaniya there's a verse in the book of allah which mentioned them in detail who knows that verse inna masadaqatu the verse, uh, mention, mention the verse. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Min Allah. An obligation prescribed by Allah. Wallahu alimun hakim. And Allah is the most, the most knowledgeable and most wise. Ahsan. So these are the eight mentioned in that verse. What are they again? Al-Fuqara and Al-Masakin. Mubin Sabil. We'll mention them in order of the verse. If we memorize the verse, it's easy. Al Fuqara wal Masakin. The poor and the destitute. We discussed yesterday the difference between Al Fuqara and the Masakin. How, what is the issue of the Fuqara and the Masakin? What, what's the translation of Faqir and Maskin? Faqir means in English. Poor. And Maskin means? Poor. <laughs> poor. And you could translate both of them to mean poor. You say he's miskin, he's faqir, he's poor. But what is, how do you understand the likes of these terms? One that. When they come together. Uh huh. These are from those terms, and there are many of them in, in, in the legislation, in the legislative terminology. They're, these are from those terms that have similar meanings. Mm -hmm. And whenever they're mentioned alone in one context, each word contains the meaning of the other. But whenever they're mentioned together in one context, each of them have a specific meaning. For example, like what? Other than faqir wa miskin. Like, like other words, huh? Al Islam wa iman. Al Islam wa iman. Even like al iman wa taqwa, or al bir wa taqwa. Sometimes they come mentioned together like this al bir wa taqwa. So they'll have a specific meaning when they're mentioned together. But whenever it's mentioned alone, bir means taqwa and taqwa means bir. And likewise, al-Islam is iman. And al-Iman is Islam. There's no Islam without iman. And there's no iman without Islam. So whenever they're mentioned in general uh, alone, then they both include the meaning of the other one. But whenever they're mentioned together in a specific context, now each one of them has a specific meaning. Each one of them has a specific meaning. From the likes of that, the faqir and the miskin. So the, the faqir, he's the one who is? He has nothing. He's destitute. He's destitute. He does not have anything. And the one who is miskin? He's needy. He's needy. He's the one who has something, but he doesn't have his needs met. He doesn't have his needs met. So there, there's a difference between somebody who's living on the street. He has nothing. He does not have a home. He does not have uh, a, pay, a paycheck. He does not have a car. He, do, he doesn't have, he, he, he's, he's uh, destitute. And impoverished and the likes like this and uh, another person who's not that bad but also he doesn't have his needs met maybe he has a house maybe he even has a car maybe he even has a job but he doesn't have enough to pay his bills he doesn't have enough to pay his needs or he pays his bills and then he doesn't have enough for his food or he, ha or he, have a, he has yeah, he, like, he's like this he's struggling he's needy and when the month goes by all of his needs are not covered all of his needs are not covered and the like side, this one is called miskin. So the point is that this is the foundation for giving zakat, the fundamental, yani for those who deserve it. Uh, and both of them are included. But also there are five other categories. After that, Allah, he mentioned, al-amilina alayha. Al-amilina alayha. And those who work for the zakat. What does that mean? The one who the, the Muslim ruler appoints to go and to gather the zakat. The one who the Muslim ruler appoints to go and to gather this, the zakat for him. It's allowed for him to get the zakat. It's allowed for him to receive the zakat. Huh? 
No, 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 no. This is something prescribed by them. Somebody will not do that and they say, well, I deserve this much. And then he'll take his own portion. And he'll decide how much. What is intended here in Allah knows best is that these people are allowed to receive the zakat. The poor person likewise, he'll not tell you how much to give him. Yeah, he, you, the, the, he'll be given an amount that is, will suffice him. And the origin with the poor people and the people of not as I mentioned, is that the poor man and he, in the Islamic lands, he'll be given from the zakat, ma sanatihi. He'll be given from the zakat that which will suffice him for a year. He'll be given from the zakat that which will suffice him for a year. And the person who is poor, he can't get by and the likes like this, and then the, 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 the ruler will give him a portion that will suffice him for the year. He will not be poor anymore. Alhamdulillah. It's the beautiful thing about Islam. If somebody thinks he's going to give a oh, he's going to give the poor man a hundred bucks. Yeah, and he, and this is allowed. Alhamdulillah. He can accept that, but the legislation is like this, and this is what is prescribed. If it's established properly in the Muslim land, the poor people, they will be given enough for their year to suffice them. They'll be given enough for their year to suffice them. They'll be brought out of poverty for, for the year. They'll be brought out of poverty for the Alhamdulillah. So the, the point is, yani, those who work and, and, and those who go and gather the zakat, for example, they're going to go and gather, they're, they're going to be sent to the farms. They're going to go gather the crops. They're going to go count the heads of the sheep. They're going to go count the heads of, of the camels. They're going to go count the heads uh, of the cows and the likes like that, and they're going to take the portion that is prescribed. And they're going to bring those animals and that zakat to the, to the ruler or to the designated area and the likes like this. To the designated area and the likes like this. As for those who have money, then it's on them. It's a trust between them and it's between Allah. That they will come and they'll say, I have this much money, zakat, I have to pay it. Like this. It's not mentioned that the Prophet wasallam sent people to the different jobs and the different people to ask them, how much money do you owe? How much money do you owe? How much money do you owe? But the people who were sent out that were working to gather the zakat, they're gathering the, the, the animals and the crops. They're gathering the animals and the crops. So this is what is intended in Allah knows best. So these are the ones who are... Uh, who are uh, working for the Muslim ruler and at his charge and at his hand and it's allowed for them to receive from that money some, uh, some, some pay, any for their efforts. This is called Adamilina alayha. So again, we, ha we, we, we have Al-Fuqara wal masakin wal amilina alayha wal mu'alafati kulubuhum. And those who you want to, you want to uh, soften their hearts. You want to unite them with you and bring, bring them close. What is intended here? Uh, huh? The kuffar is one of them. A new Muslim. A new Muslim. Uh -huh. So the, 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 the mu'allafa, qulubuhum, what is intended here is to... to, to to uni unify the hearts. That's what mu'allafa means, li li literally. To unify the hearts. So there's people you want to soften their hearts towards Islam or towards the Muslims. So what is intended here is either somebody who is uh, interested in Islam and he is close to accepting Islam, you can give him money to draw him close. Or somebody who is already a Muslim, but he's a new Muslim and maybe he's not stable yet, you give him money in order to make him firm. Or someone who is a non-Muslim He's a disbeliever, but if you give him money, uh, if you give him money, he, he will not harm the Muslims, or or he will uh, he will take uh, 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 make some efforts to take off some harm from the Muslims, or to lighten up the situation for the Muslims in the lights like this. So these are the people that's included. And he, either he is a, a, a non-Muslim about to accept Islam, you can give him zakat in order to to soften his heart and to draw him closer to Islam. Or he is a new Muslim, and he and you want to and to, to to strengthen him, and the likes like this, this is allowed. Or he's a non-Muslim, but he has, for example, position and status, and he rank, for example, a ruler, and the likes like that, somebody of authority. If you give him money, then he will. Uh, it will be a means for him to not harm the believers, or to not harm the Muslims, or to lighten some harm from the Muslims and the likes like this. All of this is included. So it's not necessary to be zakat. You can give people money in charity like this also. This is from the avenues that we get given charity. The point now is that this is from the avenues where zakat is allowed. The zakat can be distributed in this manner. The zakat can be distributed in this manner. This is the category of yani mu'allafa kulubuhum. Mu'allafa kulubuhum. How many is that? Four. How many are left? Four. Uh -huh. What's the fifth one? Wafir riqab. And freeing slaves. 
Huh? What Ghari mean? The Ghari mean they're people who have who have debts. People who have debts. There's details in each one of these affairs likewise. It's not just an absolute sense. Yani those who have debts. So to pay off somebody's debt, if the requirements are met likewise, then the, the zakat can be used for this affair. The zakat can be used for this affair. And also Fi Sabirillah. Fi Riqab War Gharimin. Nam. Fi Sabirillah is in the path of Allah. Meaning fight the, for those who are fighting jihad, any yani the legislative jihad under the underneath the banner of a uh, of, a, of a Muslim ruler who was recognized and not somebody who just claimed this and the likes like this like we see in some places today with the other billah uh, but this is from the avenues that is allowed and likewise likewise Wabin is Sabil Wabin is Sabil is the wayfarer is the wayfarer so who is that? Traveler. the traveler any traveler you can give him zakat uh, the one who's cut off the one who's on, who's on his journey and he's cut off, he doesn't have what he needs to get by. He's trying to get home, he's trying to get to a destination. And he doesn't have the means, his, he ran out of cash, he ran out of, of gas, he ran out of money for staying in the, in the lives like this. He doesn't, he's on, a, he's on the road to a destination and then he, on the way there, he doesn't have an, enough money to make it. He doesn't have enough, enough money to get to his destination, it's allowed to give him from? From the zakat, it's allowed to give him from from the zakat, the salat came from the zakat. So these are al asnaf al So again, that definition was at ta'abudu lillahi azza wa jal to worship Allah azza wa jal. It's an act of worship, so therefore it must be sincerely for the sake of Allah. How was that? Bi khraji juz in muqaddar sharan fi mal maqsus by giving up uh, a prescribed amount of wealth, a legislative, a, le- a legislative, a legislatively prescribed amount of wealth, yani in specific wealth. And we've seen that specific wealth, the asnaf al maqsusa to a specific category of people, and we have seen that likewise, biniya, with the intention, with the intention, with the intention of, of giving zakat, with the intention of giving zakat. So therefore it has to have the intention for the sake of Allah and seeking the reward of Allah, and it has to have the intention of giving zakat, giving zakat. So if somebody gave some wealth as charity for the, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, hoping for the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal, and then later on, after that, he wanted to, 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 to use that towards his zakat. Would that be allowed? No. Why not? Because zakat is a specific act of worship that has to have a specific intention. Uh, because, yes, you have to have the intention before the action. Before the action. So if he already did the action, if he already did the action, then that, that action is finished. It was for what he did it for. If he did it for the sake of Allah, it was for the sake of Allah. If it was not obligatory, it was not obligatory. Alhamdulillah. And then whenever he wants to pay zakat, he has to have the intention for zakat. He has to have the intention for zakat. So somebody who gave $100 yesterday, and then today he realized that he has $100 zakat, he will have to give $100 zakat. The $100 that he gave yesterday was for, was for, was for charity was for charity, alhamdulillah, and uh, that does not remove the responsibility of the hundred that he has today, because the hundred that he has today is an obligation for zakat, and that requires the intention to be performed along with the action. The intention along, uh, along with the action. We understand uh, these issues here. We understand these issues here, alhamdulillah. Alhamdu, alhamdulillah. So now uh, we discuss the issue of the obligation of zakat. Yani or the, the ruling of zakat. Uh, the, uh, or before that, the virtue of the zakat. We started yesterday to talk about this. Uh, the virtue of zakat. We have seen the, any that uh, this is a pillar from the pillars of Al Islam. It's the third pillar and the most important pillar from the pillars of Al Islam and from the hadith uh, of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma that is muttafiqun alayhi. Buniya al Islam wa ala khamsin. And from it, Ita is zakat. Ita is zakat. The third one. Shahadat in Allah, ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, wa iqam is salat, wa ita is zakat. Wa ita is zakat. It's the, it's the third pillar from the pillars of Al Islam. And it's the most important pillar after the pillar of a salat. It's the most important pillar after the pillar of a salat. And it has been ordered. We have been ordered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions the order of zakat. In, uh, in the Quran many times. So zakat, the, the order has come for zakat in the Quran many times. Repeatedly, over and over, a number of times Allah has ordered zakat. So this is also an indication of 
the, the importance of that and the high status of that, that Allah, He ordered for the zakat to be performed in a number of verses, numerous times in repetition, over and over and over, chapter after chapter, verse after verse, time after time, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the believers to establish, to establish and to perform the zakat. And likewise, praising those who do that. And many, many times from the attributes of the praiseworthy, it's mentioned that they are from those who perform the zakat. And likewise, those who are blameworthy and the likes like this that have a threat of the punishment of Allah are those who refuse the zakat. So all of this is indication of the level and the status and the rank and the virtue uh, of the zakat. And also the people of knowledge, they mentioned that as zakat qarina tu salati fi kitabillah. Az-Zakat, Qarina to As-Salat fi Kitab Allah. It's, it's, it's mentioned and it's coupled with the Salat and the Book of Allah. Many times you will find that. Wa aqimu salat wa atu zakat. Many, many verses are like this. If there's the mention of Salat, coupled with that mention is the mention of a zakat. Coupled with that mention is the mention of zakat. Many, many verses in the Book of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will find that. Zakat is mentioned along with the mention of a salah, an indication of the virtue of this affair and the status, uh, and the status uh, uh, of the of the zakat, the status of the zakat. So all of these affairs here indicate that. So now we discuss the the, the ruling of a zakat. What is the ruling of a zakat? We see it's a pillar about Islam, and it is an obligation for those who reach the the legislated limit. And if, for, for those who reach the legislative limit, then uh, it's an obligation. It's an obligation. And uh, it's not something that is recommended. And this is the point. That is an obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَاهِرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِيهِمْ بِهَا Take from their wealth a sadaqah, meaning a zakat, a charity. That will purify uh, their wealth and, uh, and make it good. That will purify their wealth and make it good. And likewise, the hadith that the author, he mentioned first, Yani here, the hadith of Mu'ad, in that hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَأَخْبِرْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ فَرَضَ أَوْ إِفْطَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُؤْخَضُ مِنْ أَغْدِيَعِهِمْ فَتُرَدُّ عَلَى فُقَرَائِهِمْ That indeed Allah has made a charity obligatory upon them. That is taken from their wealthy and given to and distributed amongst the poor. So it is an obligation. It is an obligation. Zakat is an obligation that must be performed. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. So this is something that's very important. This is a, it's a right. It's a right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from one aspect. He made it obligatory. To fulfill the obligation is a right of Allah. And also it's a right that the, that the poor they have. It's a right that the poor they have upon the needy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned uh, likewise uh, about that. وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌ حَقٌ لِسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌ مَعْلُومِ so this is a, a right, their wealth, there's a right on this wealth. Any those who have, uh, those who are wealthy, they have uh, the, the poor, they have a right on that wealth. So therefore it's an obligation. Therefore it's an obligation. Stemming from here, the people of knowledge, they discuss the issue of the one who denied the zakat. The one who denied the zakat. And there's, there, there's a consensus with regards to the one who denied the obligation of zakat. The one who denied the obligation of zakat, he's like the one who denied the obligation of salah. He is a disbeliever by consensus. Those who deny the obligation of salat, he says it's not obligatory. Or he denied the obligation of a zakat. Likewise, he said it's not obligatory. If he wants to give it, he can give it. And he's free. It's a free world. It's a free world and the likes like this. And, and it's up to me, my personal opinion. If I want to give the zakat, I give it. If I don't want to give it, I don't give it. The one who says the likes of this has disbelieved in Allah in the last day. Wariyadu billah. Wariyadu billah. And except in the case if he's, for example, a new Muslim, he doesn't know somebody who said the likes of these words, it's not obligatory for him to pray, or it's not obligatory for him to give zakat, and the likes like this, he denied that obligation. And the origin is that he's a disbeliever. This one, this is an action of disbelief, billah, an action of leaving out Islam, billah, except for somebody, for example, he's a new Muslim, he doesn't know, he's ignorant. He just entered into Islam recently, and he's not aware of the, of the laws and the limits that are set. And he mentioned the likes of this, he will be excused. But uh, in general, this is the case. So, man jahada wujub zakati kafar. The one who belied or denied the obligation of zakat, he disbelieved. billah. But with regards to the one who mana'a az zakat, mana'a ada az zakat bukhlan, wa shuhan, the one who denied or prohibited or did not give the zakat because of being 
uh, stingy and greedy. This one, he has a different ruling. This one, he has a different ruling. For example, somebody who grew up in a Muslim society, somebody who grew up in Medina, for example, or somebody who grew up in Mecca, for example, or somebody who grew up in a, in a Muslim country where, 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 where the society is based upon Islam. The likes of these affairs, the pillars of Islam and the fundamentals of the demon, it would not be accepted for one of them to say, oh, I didn't know. This is something that everybody in society knows. So, so, so to, the claim of ignorance for the likes of this person would not be accepted in, in these circumstances like this. And this is something that is known from Ad Islam. Somebody, for example, any of the same ruling would be for Salat. Somebody who lived in a Muslim land his whole life. He grew up with Muslim family. He grew up in a Muslim society. He heard the Adhan every day. And then he said, I didn't know I have to pray. I was jahil. Or I didn't know it's an obligation to make wudu. Like the, the, his jahil, he would not be accepted from him. His jahil, he would not be, his claim for jahil, his claim for ignorance, he would not be accepted from him and the likes like this. So the same thing with zakat. And in, in Islamic society, this is something that's well known. That, that's well known. So somebody who claimed that he was ignorant, he grew up in this manner, this would not be accepted from him and Allah knows best. As for somebody who grew up in a non-Muslim land, or, or somebody who was a non-Muslim and then he accepted Islam and he's unaware of the rulings entirely and then he claimed he was ignorant about this and that's why he made that statement then it would be accepted from him it would be accepted from him we, we understand the difference? so some of these affairs here in a, in, a, in, a, in a Muslim land in a Muslim society in a Muslim country to claim to be ignorant of these affairs would not be accepted from him yeah, need certain issues. Maybe other issues that had details and the likes would be accepted. His ignorance would be accepted. The people of knowledge would discuss that. But here with the fundamentals, Allah knows best, it would not be, it would not be accepted. It would not be accepted. So as for the one who believes that it's an obligation to pay zakat, but he does not pay it because he's stingy or he's negligent with regards to that. He's negligent with regards to that. What is the ruling for this person? The, rule, the, the person who he says uh, zakat is obligatory, but then when he said pay zakat, he doesn't pay zakat. He, 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 he hoards his wealth, he hides his wealth, he, he, he refuses to pay zakat. Uh, what is the rule? Do, is, do, is, is it said about this person that he's kafir? No. Uh, what is it said about this person? He's fasik. Uh, he's lesser than, than, than kafir. <laughs> he's not a kafir. The one who denied, the one who said that zakat is not obligatory. He said if he wants to pay it, he'll pay it. If he don't want to pay it, he don't have to pay it. This one here, this is considered disbelief. Major disbelief. As for the one who agreed and he, and, he, and he admits and he believes that it's an obligation, but then he refuses to pay that out of stinginess, out of stinginess and greed. What is the ruling for this one? He's a fasiq. He's a corrupt and wicked individual, and you know, he's upon a foul way. His iman is deficient, and his faith is weak, but he's still a believer. He's still a believer. If he died in that manner, he would be from those people who are under the will of Allah, and they have the, the threat of the punishment, and he's from those who believed. So this is something that is considered a major sin, but it's lesser than disbelief. It's a major sin, but it is lesser than disbelief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions, That verily those who hoard up the gold and the silver, and they do not spend it in the path of Allah. What is intended here? They don't perform the zakat on it. The wealth that a person he holds, the gold and the silver, and the money that he holds, uh, if he does not pay the zakat, it's considered a kens. It's considered that he's hoarding up wealth. But if he pays the zakat on that, it's not considered a kens. Even, even if he has lots of wealth. He has lots of wealth. But he pays the zakat on that, it's not considered that he is, uh, he's, he's not applied, this verse is not applied here. So the threat is here for those people who hoard up the wealth and they do not pay the zakat on that. فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ عَدِيمٍ Then give them the tidings. Then give them the, and inform them of a painful punishment. Of a painful punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions, يَوْمَ يُحْمَى عَلَيْهَا and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions on the day that uh, it will be uh, it will be it will be heated in the hellfire. Any of the wealth that they used to hoard up, it will be a means of punishment for them. It will be heated in the hellfire. And then their their foreheads and their sides and their backs will be branded by way of it. 
and it will be bent, will be burned by way of it. This is, and then it will be said to them along with that punishment, along with that physical punishment. Had that mechanism to This is what you had uh, hoarded up for your own souls. So therefore, taste. Yeah, and he meaning the punishment of that which you used to hoard up. And he said they'll be punished in two manners. They'll be punished physically. And that wealth will be, will, will, will be heated. And then they will be branded and burned with it on their foreheads. And on their backs and on their sides. And then on top of that physical punishment, likewise, they will, they will be belittled. And they will be disgraced. This is, this is the wealth that you used to. This is the wealth that you used to hoard up. So therefore, taste the punishment of that which you used to hoard. Yeah, and that was used to, to, to gather and amass without fulfilling the right of that. So they'll be likewise, and he punished in this manner with disgrace, what he ever be left. So all of this is an indication that it's a major sin. All of this is an indication that it's a, it's a major sin. There are other evidence, inshallah, we discuss in the classes to come.